kukuha na rin natin to. Okay, ito, ito. Guys, ito na, ito na. Ito yung pinaka low din yung nung senator. Okay. So, nung tinanong si Senator Robin Padilla, kamusta ang unit team? Ito po yung sagot niya. Wait lang. Ma'am po. Ma'am. Ito lang po, isunod ko lang po. Ma'am po. Ma'am. Ito lang po, isunod ko lang po. Ano? Alam naman po natin na itong uh, Duterte at ang Marcos, ito po ay magkaalyado. Ay, di ko po alam. Hanggang ngayon, po, di ko alam naniniwala yan. kayo hanggang ngayon. Po, ako po, eh, membro po ako ng uh, unit team at ang, uh, ako po ay uh, nasa ilalim ni Inday Sara Duterte at si Vice President naman po ay eh, nandoon naman po siya sa rally din ng Bagong Pilipinas. So sa akin po, nakikita ko po na, na buo pa rin kami. Nagkakaroon lamang po ng iba't ibang political uh, para po sa akin, ano, point, point of view. Kasi sa akin... Pa, uh, ganda na na, parang... So, apparently, differences in point of view lang. So, uh, pag inakusa mo ang presidente na gumagamit na illegal na stuff, it's just a difference of view, apparently. Uh, kung nag-incite ka to rebellion and secession, rebellion and separation of Mindanao, apparently, it's just a difference of opinion, right? That's a very interesting way of putting it, ha? Ano lang, guys, difference of opinion. Kasi... Nag-attend naman si Sarah doon sa rally ng ano, bagong, ano ba yung bagong, lipu, bagong Pilipinas, whatever. O, okay na daw, wala nang problema. Magandang, ano, talagang very convincing to. I find this very, very convincing. Okay, ah. Uh. Ang nakikita ko, ang, uh, ito naman po, hindi naman po yung pagsisinungaling. O, oh, hindi Mam naman po. nagsinungaling. Ulitin natin na, ito yung explanation Mam ni Bossing. Ma'am, ito one. lang po, isunod ko lang po, ano. Alam naman po natin na itong uh, Duterte, at ang Marcos, ito po ay magkaalyado. Hanggang eh, ngayon, po, naniniwala kayo hanggang ngayon? Po, ako po, eh, membro po ako ng uh, unit team. At ang, uh, ako po ay uh, nasa ilalim ni Inday Sara Duterte. Nasa ilalim na Inday Sara Duterte? Ano ibig sabihin nun? Di ba senador na siya? Uh, Anong party ba siya na nasa ilalim siya ni Sara Duterte? Hindi ko gets yan. Anong, aso, ano yung base yan na nasa ilalim siya ni Sara Duterte? Wala naman sila sa isang party. And he's a senator. Last time I check, a senator is supposed to check and balance the executive branch. Last time I check, Sara Duterte is the vice president and a member of the cabinet. So last time I check, hindi pwede yung isang senador ay nasa ilalim ng isang vice presidente. I mean... But what can I say? Siya po yung ating uh, minamahal na senador at siya po ay isang eksperto sa charter change. Ganda pa nga yung mga explanation niya eh. Kasi biglang change tone siya sa charter change niya. So, yun ang sinasabi ko, diba? The guys, honestly, isn't it weird? Now, of course, we know the reason, right? But just for a moment, kung isang, ikaw isang alien, okay, tumitingin ka, okay, whatever. Tumitingin ka sa Pilipinas, meron kang saligang batas na sinasabi ng separation of powers, Right? Ang ibig sabihin ng separation of powers is bawat branch of the state can counter-check and counterbalance each other. So no branch of the state is necessarily under the other branch of the state, or, right? Or hindi siya subsidiary, all right? Uh, hindi siya sidekick lang. Hindi pwede siya na Robin to the Batman. Hindi pwede ganyan. Ang problema is, yung iba, akala na pwede ka maging Robin to the Batman of the vice president eh, pag nas- naging ano ka na, senador ka na. <laughs> That's weird. The job of the senator is to fiscalize the executive branch. Now, it's perfectly okay na may reasonably good relationship ang Senado at ang, ang, ang executive branch when there is a convergence of national interest considerations. Okay yan. Hindi ko sinasabi na dapat mag-aaway sila. Pero yung idea na sasabihin mo na is, ikaw ay nasa ilalim ng isang vice-president habang senador ka ng bayan, that means you're not very... That means medyo kailangan pa ng crash course ng mga tao. Ito, diba? At si Vice President naman po. Eh. Ito naman yung isang, so that's the first part na I found pa, kind of interesting. Aside, aside from doon sa bigote. Galing ni Sarah, hindi ko kayang gawin ganun bigote ko ha. May beer tayo pero yung bigote natin parang hirap gawin ganyan ha. Parang ba yun yung ganyan kumbang ganyan. Anyway. Doon naman po siya sa rally din ng bagong Pilipinas. So sa akin po, Nakikita ko po na na buo pa rin kami. 
Nata- okay, so magdaan ka lang sa rally, okay na. Kahit nung sinabi nung tatay nung isa na ito, nag, nag, ano, nag-drugs yung isa, sabi nung isa, magre-resign ka na. So, lamang po, po ng iba't-ibang political, uh, para po sa akin, ano, point, point of view. Kasi sa akin, ang ang nakikita ko, ang uh, ito naman po, hindi naman po yung pagsisinungaling, ito naman po, ma'am, oh, ito lang po, isunod ko lang po. Hindi naman talaga pagsisinungaling, guys. Anyway, Ipo-post ko yung buong uh, uh, buong uh, report para you'll check it on your as I said of course respectuin natin yung copyrights etc so snippet lang ito you're free to watch I think 1 hour 45 minutes <laughs> yung buong buong interview na yan para ma-appreciate niyo naman yung kagandahan ng uh, us- usapin constitutional amendments usapin people's initiative usapin bayan now interestingly may isa pang news na si uh, si Robin Padilla, Senator Robin Padilla, Senator na sa ilalim ng isang vice president. I don't know kung anong system yan, pero apparently ganun yung sistema natin. But anyway, um, ayon kay Robin, uh, Senator Robin, oh, isa pa, actually meron tayong isa pang problema guys. Dahil actually, currently they're pushing for... Uh, They're currently they're pushing for a new law sa Senado para i-consolidate yung ating mga uh, maritime entitlement claims at saka yung ating maritime borders. Of course, this is part of a broader effort na sisiguradin natin na legally speaking, hindi lang in terms of international law but at le- also in terms of domestic laws, in line tayo sa Arbitration Award of 2016, in line tayo sa mga prevailing international law at of course, meron tayong legal pushback and legal consolidation ng ating claims in light of harassments by China. Now, one of the interesting things is that actually I, I, I know for a fact that there's another senator na medyo paalis na, na medyo problematic, na medyo pro-China. But what I didn't know is actually now you also have a situation where Senator Padilla is also putting the brakes on dito sa proposed Philippine Maritime Zones Law dahil para sa kanya dapat sa dapat iisingit yung issue ng Philippine claim sa Saba. So how do you respond to that? Okay. I mean, obviously in theory all of us want Saba to go back to the Philippines. All right? But for that to happen, dapat anda tayo na magkakagiyera with Malaysia. And uh, last time I checked, you know, Things didn't turn out very well when we tried to get Saba back from Malaysia back in the day. I'm not saying we should stop doing that. I'm just saying, if if you're gonna do that, be ready for countermeasures from Malaysia. And we know for a very long time, mga Malaysians they created troubles in Mindanao para madistract tayo. In fact, there's a big suspicion that the rebellion in Mindanao was there was a Malaysian hand there to ensure that the Philippines is bogged down. But I, I'm just telling you, all right? I'm just telling you. Now, kung matapang itong taong to. Uh, napaka-perfect yung bigote na pang Marcelo Del Pilar and all of that. Ang tanong ko is, nasan yung tapang niyan pag pinag-usapan ng China? Right? Because actually, to be honest, I don't know kung, well, I'll just, you know, presume innocence on this point. Ang, let's say, indirect effect ng ganitong posturing na yan. Posturing yan because, seriously, the moment you do that, you're gonna create a major diplomatic crisis with a fellow ASEAN country. And you're going to create a major diplomatic crisis with a country that we already had a major diplomatic crisis back in 2013. Nung sinugod ng mga Sulu, uh, Sultanate people, yung Saba. And you're going to have a major diplomatic crisis, uh, you know, in terms of cooperation with ASEAN, etc. I can go on and on and on about that. Okay? Now, gusto mo ng ganong gulo, o oh, sige, mag-DFA secretary ka na lang or something, or mag-presidente ka. But going back to this... Um, Okay naman sa akin yan na matapang natapang tapangan tayo sa sa Saba, pero dapat mas matapang pa tayo sa nangyari sa West Philippine Sea, all right? Uh, which is not which has not been uh, incorporated into another country. We're still fighting for it. We're talking about a large area. We're talking about billions of dollars of resources. We're talking about potentially trillions of dollars of resources kung sinama mo pa yung mga oil and gas sa Red Bank etc. So ang tanong ko is ano ulit yung stance ng mga taong ito? pagdating sa bullying ng China sa Pilipinas ngayon. So, yan ang problema sa mga ganitong empty posturing na yan. It doesn't think through yung mga next steps in terms of diplomatic implications. But sige, sabihin natin, okay, tapang tayo. Laban, para sa bayan. Okay, go. Then ang tanong ko, kamusta naman ang stance nyo dyan sa China? 
sa West Philippine Sea. Kung talagang matapang kayo na... Because this is the effect. If nabablock itong efforts to push ahead with the consolidated Philippine Maritime Zones Law, which is supposed to strengthen our legal position and bring it in line with International Law and Arbitration Award of 2016. If you're blocking that by pushing for some, you know, fill in the blank kind of uh, 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 position, then actually you're helping China's case. I'm not saying that's that's the that's the intention here, but that's the effect here. All right, that's the effect here, because honestly, for me, I think the issue of Ab Saba should be dealt with separately through, I don't know, a separate kind of approach, right? Uh, siguro hindi lang maritime zones law, I don't know, some sort of, I don't know, Philippine new map, whatever, okay? I can go on and on and about it, okay? Um, pero sana, huwag natin kalimutan na urgent yung problema natin sa West Philippine Sea. And arguably, it is a case whereby actually we have to fight uh, uh, immediately and urgently because every day, Habang humina yung positioning natin sa West Philippine Sea, talagang aagawan tayo ng ibang bansa, especially yung China. Alam natin yan. So, yan ang sinasabi ko eh, na my big problem is empty posturing. And even worse than empty posturing is when it comes at the expense of our national interest, urgent national interest. And as I said, oh, gusto mo matapang? Oh, di, anong tapang natin sa West Philippine Sea? Magpakita rin tayo dyan para magsayang buhay, di ba? Anyway, uh, now let's go to the a related interesting issue while we are on the issue of China, medyo mainit-init ang usapan kanina kung nanood kayo ng Bulljack TV. Hindi naman ako nanood pero nag lumalabas sa akin. Ano. Kasi, inaayos natin yung ano natin. Eh. Alright. Uh, yung fashion natin kasi inaidolo natin yung mga iba dyan. Uh, eto, eto, eto guys. Ah. So, medyo may back and forth ngayon because, because uh, between an Enrile, and a former top press person of Duterte, again, dito sa issue ng China. So, Cagayan Economic Zone Authority Administrator and Chief Executive Officer Katrina Ponce Enrile, who happens to be the daughter of Chief Presidential Counsel Juan Ponce Enrile, who happened to be the Defense Secretary of the former Marcos regime, ayon sa kanya, si dating Press Secretary Andanar was funding bloggers Katulad ni, uh, ni letter M, letter S, yan. using daw pera from China. O, oh, aba, talagang ano to ah, medyo ano. Wait lang, bakit ang bukas dito yung pro-China? Pro Wait lang ah, maganap tayo ng, madulas tayo. Maganap tayo ng you know, alternative source kasi I want to go to the original accusation first before going to the response. Alright, para naman fair tayo dito. Okay. Kasi ito, response na kagad. So parang medyo mas prominent yung ano. Okay, okay, okay. Bakit ganyan to? Ayan na naman tayo. Mainit, mainit ang usapan sa Pilipinas. Pero guys, ha, I, I, we talked about this very, very seriously for quite some times, no? Ano to? Pure Foods over Delimondo. <laughs> Ayan na naman tayo. Talaga itong mga taon to. Ginagawa nila ng kalokohan to. Ayan, ito, ito. Kunin ko na lang yung una. Okay, wala tayong mahanap na ano eh. Wala na kasing CNN Philippines. Eh. Usually, mga ganun na legit na anong hinahanap ko eh. Pag, ano. But anyways, dito na lang tayo sa mga ganyan-ganyan publication. Okay, eh, oh, ano to? Okay, billionaire or whatever. Yung mga ganyan. Uh, Ito, ito. Uy, masarap yung ano, corn beef na ano. Fairness. Masarap yung isang corn beef. Nasaan ka na? Ito, ito, ito. Para balik tayo sa first part. Okay. Del Mundo ba yan? Del Mundo? Pure foods over Del Mundo. <laughs> Ayan na naman. Nag Ina ah, okay. Okay. Oh, kasi food vlogger din pala si, ano, si Martin Andanar. Ano ang klase? May pinos siya dito, ha? Pure foods, corn beef. Ayan. Ima klase. Nangasar. Oh, kasi may, mayari yata ng dalawundo yung isa. Pero honestly, no offense sa pure foods, pero mas gusto ko yung isa. Yung isa nga, ubusan ka agad, eh. Yung isang, oh, okay, okay, ito. Medyo, 
akala natin ang, ang awa yan ay hanggang ano lang Coca-Cola and ano Royal Okay, ito, ito Okay, okay So as we said uh, Si Si Enrile, Katrina Enrile Accused Andanar, a former news anchor Turned secretary of Duterte's Presidential Communications And Operation Office of playing a significant role Doon sa financing ng mga disinformation campaign By local vloggers Ayon sa kanya, Martin Andanar is not based here He's in Beijing funding all this disinformation Like <coughs> Bojack <coughs> Okay, alright, okay Post na lang natin Wala Wala akong sinasabi ha Wala akong sinasabi, or post lang natin O kaya na akong musga Di ba nasa China na nga yung Ano, di ba Anyway, kaya na akong musga O ito ha, ito yung sinabi ni Del Mundo, ay ano <laughs> Yung head ng Cagayan Valley, o, oh, ito yung sinabi So, Martin and Danar daw ay behind Now, obviously, if you remember, there was an accusation Also back in the day when Digong was in power na Okay, guys, I- I'll put it this way I'm not saying anything, wala akong sinisabi Ang, ang sasabihin ko lang ay ganito Pansin nyo some of these bloggers Out of nowhere, bigla, ang dami na nilang followers Pansin nyo ba? Di ba may mga analysis din na parang Parang Suspiciously parang boosted kagad yung following and engagement nila. Wala akong sinasabi, i-google nyo lang yan. So, the idea of someone being behind the rise of these bloggers out of nowhere, because, let's be honest, pag pinag-usapan na ng mga bloggers na to, ano ulit yung mga backgrounds nila? Ano ba yung mga... I mean, I have nothing against anyone getting engaged in bloggers and all of that. But, you know, like, you go like zero to hero right away, and in the first six months of Digong, suddenly, you know, some people have, you know, analysis on that. Pero wala akong sinisabi. Tanay na lang natin si Ronald Diamas para may salam siya sa akin. Alright? So, essentially, this is important because yung, uh, etong businesswoman na yan, na head doon sa Cagayan, especially kanang zone, ang Cagayan po ay nasa front line ng Philippine-China uh, issues. Dahil napakalapit ito, dahil napakalapit ito sa sa <clears throat> sa Taiwan at of course concern ng China is that magkakaroon ng more American military presence sa Taiwan so malaki yung concern ng China uh, pagdating sa ano nangyari sa Cagayan na ang concern naman ng administration is baka yung mga Chinese companies uh, at yung mga Chinese operators ay may ginagawang mga fishy stuff or more than fishy stuff or I don't know, corn beef stuff, I don't know, whatever sa, sa Cagayan. And of course, there have been accusations that even the top leader, top elected leader in Cagayan may have been influenced by China. Yun ang na influence operations. Now, I'm not gonna pass a final judgment on that, but this is a very sensitive issue. Now, obviously, it's so sensitive na napasagot. Ito si, ano, si madam. Okay. So to be fair, I want to also get her side, di ba? Since hindi naman tayo kasing high level na hindi natin siya ma-interview. So, let's just have, ano, let's have highlights. Alright? Alright. Alright, ito, ito. Ito, ito, ito. Aba, ba? Let's get, ano, Lodi yan, Lodi. Okay, guys. Uh, okay, okay. Panorin muna natin si... Hello! Magandang-magandang araw, Pilipinas! Sa lahat ng mga palangga, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, at sa buong mundo, kumusta kayong lahat? Grabe! Talagang uh, pinag-uusapan ang aking alindog sa buong social media, pati na rin sa mga mainstream media. Kaya naman kagabi, Aba. wala tayong vlog kasi nag-sleep in Big time, ako. ha? Diba? Parang, big time, big time, big time. Uh, kamukha lang ni, ano, ni Cinderella at saka ni Sleeping Beauty. At syempre, nagbanat at nag, ano, nagka, nag, ano, nagpalat, nagpiko ng fera. Pero bago ang mga eksenang kaganapan, mga palangginging, hayaan nyo munang ipakilala ko sa inyo ang Sendwave App. Sa Sendwave Aba? App, libre ang padala pabuntang Pilipinas. <laughs> ang dami pala siyang so, send. Okay, okay. Canada, Wait lang guys. Uh, Ilabas ko yung highlight part niya. Paano ko ba maano tong isang to? <laughs> it lang. Kasi guys, we have to get her side. It's a fair thing, di ba? Journalistic practice yan. First, fair journalistic practice yan. Para naman. Para naman! 
Pero paano ko ito ma-ano? Paano ko siya ma-move? Bakit ganyan? But anyway, na diretsoy na lang natin ito. Mag-low tech muna tayo guys. Kasi di ko ma-ano eh. Kailangan ko i-forward kasi ang dami niyang... Ang dami niyang mga... Mga ano eh. Talo pa ako sa ano eh. Mga side... Side comments. Ang problema naman kasi sa kanya, ang dami niyang mga hanash. Napupunta kung saan-saan yung topic. Eh, napunta pa sa topic ng ano, ng Liza Araneta. Hey, mag- Enrele, okay. Yeah, si Katrina Ponce Enrele, na, ano, na, na, ano man siya. Ano man siya palangga, uh, in-appoint man siya ni Koting uh, bilang chief dyan sa, sa 